All right, hello again, everybody. Welcome back to Airbus 320 Tech Talk. What do all those buttons do? Thank you again so much for joining me today. We are going to talk about the systems and status display section on the Airbus 320 flight deck. But before we get started, as always, if you like what you're hearing and seeing, please hit the like button, leave comments down below, hit subscribe, all that kind of good stuff. Just helps me keep this channel moving forward and continues to uh, keep this hopefully fun, engaging, and exciting for everybody out there that might be watching. So. As I mentioned, we're gonna kind of build on a lot of what we talked about last time as we continue the discussion about this, this section of the, the flight deck here. So what we're talking about today, like we said here, the, the systems and status display, oftentimes we're referred to just simply as the SD or the status display. And I wanna kind of build on a couple of things that we had mentioned last time. So in, in the previous segment, we talked about this area uh, right here. You know, this is the top screen of, uh, of these the, the two here in the middle section of the flight deck between the captain and the first officer's positions there. So like I mentioned last time, the, the ECAM or the electronic centralized aircraft monitoring system on board the airplane, it's always you know constantly looking out at everything that's happening from a system standpoint. And if there is problems, it gives us guidance on how to troubleshoot those things. So if you're curious about that, of course, go back and watch the, um, the previous video that I'd made. But you know, what I'm going to talk about today will certainly build upon that concept in this SD um, display here is certainly part of that. And the, you know, the, the status display, just as the name implies, it, it gives us a little bit more, let's say, expanded information or additional information or details about, you know, once again, what's going on with the airplane. And in the case of um, a failure or a malfunction of some sort, it gives us just, you know, that in-depth look that the EWD doesn't necessarily give us just by, you know, the, the little portions of text that we'll see up there. We kind of get, you know, some graphical representations of all the things that are happening in an airplane. You know, today's segment is going to be segment one of just this this SD discussion that I'm going to talk you through. So I want to take uh, the time to just step through every single page that we could see down there. But today, you know, I'm going to give you just a little bit of high level stuff to, to kind of start with. And we'll build on that in the next, you know, couple segments as we step through all this. But as I said, um, you know, so the SD once again gives us expanded system synoptic information as well as uh, additional troubleshooting guidance. It'll it'll tell us um, additional portions of uh, systems that might be degraded or you know, uh, let's just say uh, functionalities or capabilities of the airplane that might be lost or might be compromised as a result of um, a given failure. And I want to kind of talk about that just a little bit here. I pulled up a slide. So, you know, once again, in the last video, we talked about, you know, the case of, you know, let's say there was a system malfunction or a failure or something. It would populate up here and you would, you would kind of get, you know, these big letters that tell you exactly what's going on. And uh, down here, you might see something that populates on the screen that looks something like this. Um, once we go ahead and hit the status button on our, our little panel down there, we'll, we'll kind of talk about that. Um, you know, later on down the line a little bit when we get down to those buttons specifically. But, you know, just the, the status specifically will open up some additional information, like we said, that kind of relates to that failure that might have occurred, um, you know, with the airplane. And like I said, it, you know, this is related to whatever it populated on the EWD above this. But, you know, coming down here, it just gives us some additional information. So this case here, this is an instance if you had a, a number two engine failure, there's there's some additional things here that the the airplane wants us to take into consideration. But, over here too is a very important part. You know, you have this in op systems section on the status display here that will just tell you, you know, each one of these these system components has been compromised by that failure there. So just, you know, kind of a high level thing, but I just want to, you know, show you, you know, one uh, quick slide of some options of things you might see down there in that status display if you had uh, some sort of failure occurring. Um, you know, with the airplane in general. Like I said, this is just this is that expanded stuff that I was telling you about. So we'll close this out, and you know, one of the things I wanted to also make mention of with the status display here is I think this is one of the coolest features on the Airbus, and you know the reason why I, I say that is because the status display is always, it's automatically dishing you exactly the information that you might want to see at you know, any given point in time. So you know, in, in the normal progression of a day's flight, um, the screens are actually changing you know, relevant to the phase of flight that we're in, and I brought up another graphic here that I wanted to show you. And, you know, as always, I won't, you know, uh, you know, talk or, um, you know, talk you through every single thing that appears on the slide here, but pause the video and take a, a quick look here. But just to kind of spell it out for you, um, you know, for each, you know, phase of flight, like we said, as we progress through the entire duration of, you know, one cycle in the airplane, let's say, from, you know, pushing back to the gate and getting everything started till pulling in at the arrival gate and getting it all shut down, 
you can just see what page specifically would be displayed for which um, you know phase of flight that we're in. So uh, pretty cool thing, like I said. But you know, not only that, um, if there is a failure of some sort or there's um, a system that's operating outside of its normal parameters, the plane will actually just bring up that uh, synoptic page that uh, relates directly to that system. So. Like I said, it's just, you know, everything along the lines of, you know, how the Airbus is designed is just making our, our lives as pilots easier and just making things ultra efficient. And just, like I said, just, it, it's super nice that it just dishes you exactly what you might want to know, um, you know, whatever given, you know, type of situation you're finding yourself in. So once again, be it a normal day or, you know, an abnormal day when, when weird things are happening, it just, it kind of puts it all there for you right in your face. So it's, it's really nice uh, in that regard. Um, let's see here. So um, we'll just, uh, you know, we'll continue our discussion here. And, and like I said, today I want to just talk about um, just some general stuff. So one other thing, too, that I'll make mention to kind of lead off, uh, you know, these, these next couple uh, discussions that I'm going to put together for you here is just I want to talk a little bit about this cruise page here. And one interesting thing about the, the cruise page on the Airbus is this is actually the, the only page that we cannot select ourselves so what I mean is, you know, down here we have this control panel that you can actually, you can isolate, you know, a, a given system. And if you just press on one of these buttons, it'll bring up the, the synoptic page you'll want to look at. But once again, there is no way for us to push a button and get the cruise page to populate. It's only there um, or available to be seen in that, you know, uh, that kind of normal progression, like I showed you a few moments ago on that slide where, you know, just for this given phase of flight, you know, this will automatically pop up unless you you know, ask the plane to show you something else. But I just, I wanted to, you know, kind of take a minute just to point out everything that we'll see here. So in the cruise portion here, you know, we, we, we see on the top line here, there's a fuel used for the left and right engines. And then there's a combined, you know, between engines one and two, the total fuel used since we started the first engine. Uh, we have an oil quantity readout here. We have an N1 vibration readout here. Below that, we have the uh, N2 vibration readout uh, in this section here. Uh, down from there, we, we have just a little bit of uh, information um, about the air system on the airplane. And I think this is very relevant. I mean, they, they, it's nice that Airbus, you know, thought this out and they put this information, you know, right there to just live on the cruise page, which is normally what we're looking at, um, you know, just, you know, in the, the general cruise, you know, portion of our flight, obviously, when we're up at altitude and we're just kind of, you know, cruising across the country going wherever we're going. But, you know, of course, the air page is, is relevant because we just want to know, you know, what environmentally is going on inside the airplanes. We want to keep everybody comfortable. So, of course, they've they've um, put some depictions here of the, the zones uh, on, you know, in the cabin there. So what the temperatures are all doing in each of those places. Um, this right here tells you the landing elevation. The, the system is in the auto mode. And right now the, the landing field elevation is set at zero feet. Um, we also have some information about the pressurization system on the airplane. And this is pretty handy to know. Um, not that we're, we're constantly looking at this and paying attention, but I, I think one of the things that I'm always thinking about when I look at this is you'll, you'll notice you know normal trends when the airplane is either climbing or descending. But I think this would be a, a really uh, good place to look if you started to sense some um, some abnormal, you know, conditions like you'd, you know, if the plane was depressurizing or something, uh, you would certainly, you know, start to feel, you know, some strange sensations uh, through your ears and whatnot. But, you know, this is one of the things that I would look at immediately to kind of give you um, maybe some uh, heads up that, hey, you know, the, uh, this, this trend is starting to develop and maybe there's a situation, um, you know, developing with the pressurization system that, of course, is a critical thing you're going to want to know about right away. So, you know, they, they put some uh, put some information here about the pressurization pressurization system on the airplane. So we have the the pressure differential between the inside of the airplane and the outside. We have the uh, the cabin vertical speed. So whether it's climbing or descending, or, or right now in this case it's stable. So there's a zero foot per minute indication there, and then just just tells us the general cabin altitude uh, that the the plane is at at this at this point in time. So here when I took this photo, we're up in the you know high 30s, some odd 30,000 some odd feet cruising around and we have a, a cabin altitude of 6,550 feet here. Now the last thing I'll talk about here is just the, the bottom section on the SD here. And this is actually uh, interesting in that no matter what you display up in the top section here, this always remains uh, exactly constant. It'll never, 
uh, you, it'll never be displaying anything else. You always have the, these these data pieces down here. So, you know, just on the left here, we have the the total air temperature, the static air temperature, and the the ISA deviation here. Uh, these are very useful. We actually find ourselves looking at this section quite a bit. You know, whenever we're flying through visible moisture, we always want to know if we're in a an area that we're susceptible to accumulating icing. So you'll always look down here and look out for that that range of temperatures where you know the airplane um, can possibly be accumulating ice. So good thing to have um, as as far as you know the the uh, stuff that's always being displayed down there. Just to always keep that there. Uh, in the middle here, we just have the the clock, the Zulu time. Not so much as important, to be honest. Like, you know, most of the time you, you're really never um, looking here. I guess a lot um, in the you know general course of a general flight. I guess you'd say for you know, there's another clock uh, up here on the right. Uh, I I just tend to look here if I'm ever curious about the Zulu time, but most of the time it's not extremely relevant uh, when we're actually operating. Uh, and then the one on the right here, the, the GW or the gross weight, it just tells you exactly where the, the aircraft's weight is at at this point in time. And if you think about when we, we first get in the airplane, we initialize everything, put all our weights in as far as you know what we've loaded onto the airplane, and the, the plane knows how much fuel it starts with. So as you progress through, throughout your flight, I mean, it's always monitoring that and, and looking out and subtracting off the you know, the, the top there, so to speak, as we, we burn down gas and it, and it gives you this, the gross weight here. And, you know, this, this of course is very important and something that you're always going to want to know, you know, where you stand out and you're just because it has to do with, you know, this, this situation. If you, you did have to make a, uh, an overweight landing, you would just want to know, you know, kind of in a pinch, you know, where the plane is at weight wise. So, uh, that's pretty much all I had to, to tell you guys about uh, in today's discussion. Uh, if you've got questions, go ahead and leave them down in the comment section there. And as I said, you know, tune into the next couple of videos here, and we'll talk about each one of the synoptic pages one by one, and we'll just really briefly go over, uh, you know, what all those things are. So, I uh, hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll talk to you again real soon. Bye bye.